Ladies and gentlemen, William Samoya Ruto is a very smart politician, a schemer. And William Ruto has successfully managed to strategically lock Musalem Dabadi out of the 2027 political equation completely. I don't think Musalem Dabadi will be a factor in 2027. Today, William Ruto chaired a Kenya Kwanzaa parliamentary group meeting at State House. And I observed one thing or two things. The first thing I observed was the high number of members of parliament who attended this particular event. I'm not sure whether there's a single member of parliament who missed this event. The second thing I observed was the absence of Musalem Davadi and Moses Masika Wetangula from this particular event. And for me, I strongly believe that in politics, nothing happens out of mere coincidence. Everything in politics is normally well-planned, well-scripted, and executed to achieve a specific political objective. Why was Musalia Mdavadi locked out of this particular meeting? This is what status updated after the meeting, that President Ruto to MPs serve the electorate. The pres President William Ruto has asked MPs to prioritize projects that have a direct impact on the lives of Kenyans, which is okay. He told them to carry out their parliamentary assignment with seriousness, correct? And he's saying, he's quoted, you are elected to serve the people. Their issues must come first, which is correct. The president was speaking on Wednesday while addressing a Kenya Kwanzaa parliamentary group in status, Nairobi. He urged the MPs to desist from engaging in trivial issues like the review of the constitution to alter the presidential term limit, of course. And he's also concluding, as president is quoted, as president, I won't participate in efforts aimed at mutilating the constitution for partial, selfish, and personal interests. He told the MPs to pass regulations that will facilitate the implementation of the Hustlers funds. And I'm going through the photos here. And clearly, almost all members of parliament allied to Kenya Kwanzaa were present, including the Mpuria Buru, who is one of Rail Odinga's key ally, was also present. And during this meeting, Kenya Kwanzaa also nominated the five individuals they will be sending to the East African Legislative Assembly, including my friend, uh, including my friend uh, Hassan Omar. In, uh, during this meeting, the person who was seated next to the president was actually the deputy president, Rikaji Gashagwa. The other side there was Kimani Shungwa, who is the majority leader at the National Assembly. This other side was uh, Ali Roba, the senator. And indeed, they voted. But the absence of uh, Musalia Mdavadi, Wetangula, and Foreign Affairs Cabinet Secretary, Alfred Motua, is what caught my attention. Because for me, I'm reading politics behind their absence. And specifically, the absence of the absence of uh, Musalia Mudavadi. So in this video, I want us to look at why Musalia Mdavadi was absent. Before we do that, in case you are watching this channel for the first time, I want you to take a second or two, click that subscribe button, so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support, because without the support, this channel cannot be where it is. Now, why do you think William Ruto locked out Musalia Mdavadi and Wetangula from this meeting? I know... Some of you will tell me that Wetangula is the speaker of the National Assembly and therefore cannot attend these meetings, which is okay. Some of you will also tell me that Musalem Ravadi al already resigned as a party leader of uh, ANC and uh, being the chief prime cabinet secretary, he cannot attend such meetings. Cabinet secretaries in this country, in this country are allowed to attend 
political events. That is the truth. That is the truth. Remember, one of the mandates of Musalim Dabadi was to answer questions in parliament. So which means he would have attended this meeting in that capacity to, to figure out how the legislative agenda of Kenya Kwanza were going to be pushed forward in parliament. The other fact which we cannot run away from is that William Ruto is shrewd. He has figured out 2022, I mean 2027, and he realized that the best way was to clear the path for him. And how do you clear the path? Ensure that all those who are obstacles are removed. Currently, William Ruto is so busy trying to convince or to persuade Stephen Kalonzo Musyoka to join his, him. The moment Kalonzo Musyoka will do that, I don't think William Ruto will have an opponent. The only opponent will then be Raila Odinga. And of course, Raila Odinga is planning to retire according to sources which I'm getting. But why do you think he was locked out of this meeting? Number one, this particular meeting was uh, primarily a Kenya, I mean a UDA, United Democratic Alliance Party, UDA affairs. So probably they didn't want Muslim Rabbi to raise issues. Remember, NC party members have been complaining that they are being uh, shortchanged. When the list of uh, those who were proposed for nomination to the East African Legislation Assembly came up, I remember Kenya Kwanzaa, especially those in uh, other political parties, raising concerns that they were being locked out. I remember someone like uh, UD, I mean, MDG of uh, David Ocheng, at some point they submitted the name of a young lady from Kisumu. She was knocked out. So when they published the, the uh, were there 15 names? When they published those 15 names, none of them belonged to other political parties other than Kenya Kwan, I mean, other than UDA. So, Muslim Dabadi would have raised some questions here. So, to prevent him from that, convince him that he's no longer allowed to attend these meetings, then he's going to miss it. Then those who are there will now see William Ruto as the boss, and therefore, no questions were going to be raised. So, that's number one. Number two, there is this uh, position which Muslim Dabadi is occupying as the Prime Cabinet Secretary. And Moses Watangula is also occupying the position of the Speaker of the National Assembly. You know, William Ruto promised them those positions and they agreed. So William Ruto can actually use those positions to lock them out. He will simply direct the majority leader at the National Assembly who is Kimani Shungwa, to write letters, to, I mean, to write invitation to members of parliament, all of them, and then just inform them that the president is attending, so that Mudavadi is not informed. He will just read on paper or on TV, or he will just be told, okay, because you are the prime cabinet secretary, we don't want issues with the Kenyans, because we used to raise some of these concerns before. We don't want these issues to come up. Please, just stay away. Weta, we when you speak of the National Assembly, stay away. So William, that's what William Ruto wanted. By doing that, <laughs> by doing that, William Ruto now has direct link with members of parliament allied to Weta, allied to Mudavadi. Assuming this will continue for the next five years. Who do you think this MP should regard as their boss? <laughs> Isai Timami or uh, I don't know the new leader of Fort Kenya. <laughs> Number three, the idea to lock these guys is actually William Ruto's elaborate strategy to keep Weta and Mudavadi out of politics. So you wanted to be the speaker, you are there. You wanted to be the prime cabinet secretary, you are there. The condition is you're not going to participate in politics. So they'll be locked out. The other day I saw <laughs> Wetangula really struggling to participate in politics in Bungoma. You know there's a by-election in Bungoma and as the Speaker of the National Assembly he's not supposed to campaign for a candidate. But Ford Kenya and UDA are fighting down, down there. So Weta attended this funeral and he was like asking residents to vote for 
for Kenya candidate. How do you do that? <laughs> He's the speaker of the National Assembly. He's not supposed to do that. But he was now asking them, what will happen if the four Kenya candidate is defeated and the UDA candidate wins or maybe the UDM candidate wins and he goes to the Senate and they'll be meeting, you know. So for me, the strategy here was to lock Ruto, I mean, was to lock Mudavadi specifically out of politics because Mudavadi had the potential of, if he were to contest and Raleigh Odinga is out of equation, he had the potential of winning Raleigh Odinga support base. He had the, the, the potential of disrupting William Ruto's equation. So for me, <laughs> he's now successfully out. And lastly, I think William Ruto is also strategically taking charge of Kenya Kwanzaa politics. You know, you can imagine the deputy, I mean the president there with members of parliament from all their coalitions, and is the only leader present. Weta is not there, Mudavadi is not there, uh, Alfred Mutua is not there in his capacity as a foreign affairs minister. All these guys are, are not there. So he's basically taking charge of Kenya Kwanzaa. And there is nothing they can do. I don't know what you think, but for me, that's how I'm looking at it. Please let me hear your thoughts on this matter. <laughs> bye bye.